Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. That's deep. Until you get caught up in that, you don't realize how deep that thing right there really is. That's a serious warning. And some of us can be, oh goodness, we could be skipping along doing great in the spirit, having victory after victory, the Lord revealing himself. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I feel so holy and righteous right now. Ooh, I feel the power of God. Oh, the quickening of the Holy Spirit. Glory. And you'd be going through all that, all those Christian calisthenics and gyrations, and you really think you're on, you're on it, baby. You're on top of the game. You're on the mountaintop. And it just takes one little rock to trip over to tumble you all the way down to the bottom of the valley. And you feel like you've lost all this ground. Well, that's why Jesus is there. Jesus is there to pick us up and get us to climbing back up again. See, the walk with the Lord is an upward climb. It's not a downward slope where you get to sit on a ski, I mean, on a, a sled and just slide down and cruise. No, it's not a cruise journey. It is a climb, an upward climb. And during the upward climb, you will lose your footing. You will lose ground. You will fail. But you don't set up a new address at the bottom of the valley. You clean your behind off. Repent, get yourself back on task, and get back in the game, climbing back up that mountain. See, there are places God wants to take you. There are places and plans and things he has in store for you. Many games. I played handball. When I first started out, I lost almost every game. But I stayed there and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. And I got to the point where the brothers didn't want to play me because I was wiping them clean. You hear me? But that is the same way when you walk with the Lord. It takes practice and practice and practice and you stay at it. You press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. And you latch on that thing with a determination of a pit bull. And you don't let it go. I don't care how hard the devil tries to yank it out of your mouth. You got a death grip on that thing. You don't let it go. See, some of us, we want to be saved. We want all the goodies that salvation brings. We want forgiveness. We want to go to heaven. We don't want to go to hell. We want to be healed. We want to be blessed financially. We want all the blessings, everything running over, you know, all the good stuff, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. Amen. But you don't realize that between glory to glory, between strength to strength, baby, you got some lions to slaughter. You got some bears to kill. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And you got the victory. But what many of us do is we take our focus. And we place it on the problem. We place our focus on me, myself, and I. We get drawn away of our own lust. 
We get distracted, easily distracted. Mm. Ooh, child. Ooh, do you look good? Mm, 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 mm. What I could do with you. Mm. We get distracted, don't we? We see that fine car. We know we can't afford it, but we buy it anyway. Ooh. We see those beautiful clothes. I've fallen into that. Bought one outfit too many and had to strain to pay a bill. We all have to deal with the big, the big sins. We call them big sins. The big temptations. Let's call them enticements. Because not everything's a bad thing. It's just not always in season. And when something's not in due season, it too becomes a stumbling block. So, so these are the things that we have to watch out for because Satan will have you so distracted, you will totally lose track of time. You will lose track of everything you're supposed to be doing with that moment, that day, the business you were supposed to take care of. I have seen people lose out. Let me, oh, thank you, Lord. Let me tell you something that happened to me. Now you get to hear some gossip. Y'all can spread it all you want, baby cakes, because... I'm telling it for your good. All right. Now, as my father used to say, if I've gone down that road and I know there's a pothole, I'm going to warn you and tell you, don't go down that road. There's a pothole. If you go down that pot, that road and you fall in the pothole, that's on you. I did what I'm supposed to do. Now, I'm going to tell you a pothole of mine. I was in the speech forensics team at uh, Pasadena City College. And we were winning left and right. I mean, we were all winning left and right. Team was a good team that year. We were in debate, oral interpretation, readers, theater. I forget some of the other stuff. But okay. Uh, now, <laughs> check this out. We are all the way. I won first place at, in the state. Tommy won. Uh, I think the Superior, Millie won third place, and one of the other people won. I mean, we were just raking them in. We get to the national tournament. We have done this thing so much, it's almost like you could do it blindfolded, baby. So I get a little cocky and get a little slack, and I get distracted. And I meet a guy at the forensics tournament. This is back in the day when Mama Sita was a stanky hoe. All right. We sit there. Now, we know. We all know our competition. We know everybody that's there. We're in the finals now. We're not in the, at the bottom. We're at the finals waiting to see who's going to get first, second, third. And we're shooting for first. What does Mama Sita do? Dum diddy dum dum. That's me. Yeah. Dum diddy dum dum decides to have a one-night stand rendezvous with this guy. She barely even knows his name. And what happens? We stay up all night long. Mm, mm, mm. You fool, you fool, you fool. I was so tired. I was so bleary-eyed. I didn't know what to do. And I'm drinking coffee and everything, trying to perk myself up because my timing, everything I can feel it is off. We got in that tournament, came out with a fair, and it was my fault. My fault. It wasn't, it wasn't the whole group, thank God. This was the individual event where I, that was the day that I, you know, for oral interpretation. And that was when I was, I wasn't, I didn't bring my team down as far as the reader's theater. That was on another day, but you know, we got third place in the, in the nation for that. But for this one, I could have gotten first place in the nation for oral interpretation. I was too busy screwing around literally the night before instead of staying focused. Who knows what opportunities that could have opened up for me? I screwed it away. I played it away. I wasted the opportunity. 
How many, how many opportunities have you wasted away? How many things have you missed out on? Have you lost out on because you made the wrong choice when that wasn't even supposed to be part of your agenda? Some little old slimy temptations comes comes crawling up on you and you're like, <gasps> and you give into it like the woman with the gambling, like the dum diddy dum dum with the speech tournament. How many more do you have to lose before you wake up and smell the coffee? I'm so, I'm being quiet right now. I'm letting that sink in. Some, I was really fortunate because the kind of life I led, I should have been... I should have been laid up with a whole bunch of baby daddies and all kind of nonsense. No, God had mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now, so what I want to tell you, here's another one. Oh, thank you, Lord. Listen, this is more of a literal sense of what this story tells. There was a man that I knew who had just gotten out of jail, out of prison, actually. Here he is. He made the mistake. It was a very poor choice, but he crossed state lines. And he decided he was going to get a new start in another state. He gets the new start, but he's still out there screwing around playing with women. And check it out. Check it out. He sells hair products. And while he's at the salon, now there are like five of us in the salon that are born again Christians, including the owner. So we're listening to this man in between selling products tell his testimony of how God, when he wasn't even saved, supernaturally delivered him from a 200 and some odd dollar a day heroin addiction. And as he's leaning up telling the story, in my spirit, and one of the ladies' spirit, we're looking at each other, and we're getting the same impression. This man is called to preach the gospel, called to be a minister of God. We can feel it in our spirit. And he says he heard a voice tell him as the dope dealer was coming down the street. He heard God's voice say, Walk away. Just walk away. And as he obeyed the voice and he turned and walked away, he said the desire for drugs left him and never, ever, ever came back. He never even had to go through a moment of withdrawal. Now, but he kept playing the fool with what he had with the opportunity God gave him to turn around completely and walk away completely from a life of sin, he kept playing with sin. And one day after he got married, he had to send word back to his wife because he was incarcerated once again to tell her, that he had given her full blown AIDS. Now I say this to say, I say that to say this, how many times have you or I been spared an SD, anyway, um, um, a sexually transmitted disease, STD, how many of us have been spared those because we chose to stick with God? And how many of us have opened the door for Satan to attack our bodies with those diseases because we won't live, leave sin alone? We keep wanting to lay with the devil and date the Lord. We lay with the devil at night. We, we date, we... um. We have rendezvous with him. We screw around with him at night. But by day, we date the Lord and have lunch with him every once in a while. 